about uh, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. Yes, it was a joke. I uh, actually I told that joke a few days ago in uh, months in class. It's a very interesting uh, thing. There are many righteous people that they 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 bought their their part in the world of tshuva. And there is no bad tshuva, a person that is coming closer to Hashem, that will not enjoy their merit. The biggest and most clearest example is Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. Like you, if you're not part of them, so you're out. If, uh, if you don't believe in Moshe Rabbeinu, so you're out. If, if, if like all of those righteous people, they, they achieved something, that if you're not including yourself in them, so you're out. All of the Tanaim and Amoraim, the righteous ones that wrote the Mishnayot and the Gemara Kedusha. If you contradict one word that is written in the Gemara Kedusha, if you think that you're wiser than them, okay, so you're out and they're in. If you're not going to go in the gates of, of, of that Torah, what did they, because they received that permission from heaven, to let us all in, to be those ones that will let us in, into the gates of purity. So there are righteous people that came in the last generation, like the Lubavitch Rebbe, like Rabbi Shlomo Karlibach, like Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, like the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh. No matter what you're going to do, you must enjoy their, the fruits of, of their Avodat Hashem, of, of their purity. There is no way in the world that a Baal Tshuva will experience the process of Tshuva without hearing something from the Lubavitch Rebbe, some music of the Kalibach Rebbe, from, from, from Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. It's, it's not, there's no way. So, the gift that they received is that they will hand the opportunity of Tshuva to, to the last generation. So Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, that he is one of those giants, one of those angels that came down from heaven to open the gates of tshuva for all of us. The issue is, why, why are we following those righteous people? What is their merit? Hashem in Barach, he took those righteous people and he put them in charge on the gates of tshuva. What does it mean? The gates of tshuva are very heavy. There is a trial above the head of every person that wants to come in into the gates of tshuva. And those angry, very upset, boiling angels, furious angels are refusing. They're not letting anyone in. Why? Not because they're bad, not because they're mean. There is a book that was Sefer Heichalot. It's an old ancient Midrash that is describing the angels in heaven. And you have seven floors, seven levels in heaven that a person that really wants to see Hashem, to know Hashem, he must go through those seven worlds to see Hashem. Seven Heichalot, seven places, seven floors. And the angels are standing and guarding to see if you're worthy or not. Like that amazing story that most of us know about Rabbi Akiva and his friends, that they wanted to go into the gates of Gdusha to get inside the Pardes, that holy field of, of, to heaven. And the guards were there, and guards are angels that were standing and asking them questions and, and testing them and checking their purity and the purity of their intentions. And only if you pass the test so you can climb from one place, one flow to the next, and then to the third and fourth and fifth. And in the book of Heichalot, Sefer Heichalot, they're describing over there the, the story, what had happened with those righteous people, like Yonatan uh, ben Uziel and Rabban Gamliel and uh, Rabbi Ishmael Kohen Gadol, those huge Tanaim that they had, and Rabbi Akiva is with them, that they had that will to come into those gates of, of Kedusha, and they were facing those angels. A very frightening sight, experience, to see those 
angels that are made out of fire, run, riding on horses that are made out of fire, and spitting fire, and smoke comes out of their nostrils, and uh, thunder is coming out of their eyes, and, and they're checking, who are you, what are you doing here? Not because they're bad, not because they're mean, only because that Hashem is so great, that Hashem is so humble, and He doesn't care about His honor, so they want to honor Him. So they don't want no one that is not worthy to get inside the gates of Gdusha. So the gates of Tshuva are very heavy. It's very hard to do Tshuva because those angels, they must protect Hashem. Hashem's name, Hashem's honor. Hashem, He's the King, He's the Master, He's above, He's the greatest, He's the kindness, He's the, he's the best, He's the most beautiful, the greatest, whatever. All the praises and, and all of the, the, the rewards and titles, nothing can describe how great He is. And those angels, they have some sense, they saw something about Hashem, so they must protect Him. That's their nature. And now we're coming with our scars and stains. Hi, what's going on? Where is that Hashem? I want to see Him. Where is He? Can I come in? Can I? So. Immediately they want to block. Immediately they want to stop you. Immediately they don't want to let you in. And that's the happiness of the gates of tshuva. This is why it's so hard to get into the gates of tshuva and really to complete your tshuva. So, Hashem Itbarach, that He is chafetz b'tshuva, that He wants us to do tshuva. He truly wants us all to complete our tshuva process. So what He did? He took people, righteous people, that are able to stand the heat of those angels, that they can win Midat Hadim, the judgments, they're not afraid. You put them in front of an angel and they have the wisdom, like the wisdom of Moshe Rabbeinu, to know how to answer back, how to talk back with the angels. It's written that when Hashem Barach, he wanted to give the Torah to our nation, to Am Israel, so he told Moshe Rabbeinu, come, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the Torah. So then Moshe climbed, went up to heaven and he saw those angels and the angels start telling, no way, arguing, who is he, to Hashem Barach, who is he that you're going to give him the Torah? He's flesh and bones, he's getting married, he's having children, he's got Yetzirah, he can lie, he's got lust, desires, who is he, Why? the Torah is from the world of, of beyond, is from the world to come, you cannot give the Torah to physical person, to physical people, who is he? So Hashem Barach told Moshe Rabbeinu, answer, Kadima, come on, tell them what you think. Moshe Rabbeinu told Hashem, I'm terrified, I'm afraid. They can burn me with their, the heat of their breath, they can burn me alive. Moshe said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Echoz You need to hold my throne of honor, and if you just grab it, and then no one can damage you. So Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is explaining in Likutei Moran the meaning of that advice that Hashem gave to Moshe Rabbeinu. That is the advice for all of us, for every righteous person that wants not to be hurt by those angels, that he, hey, I want to say something, hey, I want to come closer to Hashem, hey, I want to receive the Torah. Okay, there is an advice. The same advice that Hashem said, gave to Moshe Rabbeinu. What was that advice? Echoz bekisei You need to hold my throne of honor. It's written that under the throne of honor, there, it, that is the source of the souls of Israel. You need to hold yourself with all of the souls of Israel. If you are uniting yourself with our nation, if you are making yourself one piece with the rest of Am Israel by Ahavat Israel, you love them, you bond yourself to all of them. By doing that, you won't be hurt by the angels. The angels cannot hurt that nation. They can hurt individuals that are divided. Like that it's written on the Yetzirah, that that's his trick against us. Afred Umshol, he is separating one. You all saw on National Geographic. The predators are coming, terrifying, frightening one of the animals, take him out of the herd, and then jumping three, four on that poor animal. Now when it's not part of the herd, it's dead. When it's part of the herd, it can be stupid, it can be slow, it can be dumb. As long as they're together, no, nothing can happen to them. But when he's separated, when he's out, he's running all alone, confused, he can be the strongest one of that herd, and he's lost. 
So you need to attach yourself to the group, to the community, to the holy nation of Israel. That's what that's the advice. So those righteous people that receive that wisdom, that realize the real will of Hashem, how really we will be protected from the angels, they now have that power to hold that heaviness, that huge weight of the gates of Tshuva. And they are standing under the gates of Tshuva and they're putting their hands just like that in the air and they're holding the gates of Tshuva open. And then all of us, weak people, that don't have that power, that don't have also that Avat Israel to be included with Am Israel with a, a, a wishing a happy heart and a wishing so desiring heart to do good and just regular normal people trying to do the best that we can. The gates of heaven can be too hard for us, gates of Tshuva. So those righteous people are holding the gates open for us and now we can pass. And now the Tshuva, it's okay. It, can, it might be frightening, it might be hard sometimes, but it's not impossible anymore. You don't need to suffer from all of that weight, from all of the complaints, from all of those arguments of all of those angels against you because now you have those huge giants that are standing and fighting for you and opening the path for you. So Rabbi Nachman is saying in Ikutei Moran, but before of the Tshuva, but before that the person is doing Tshuva, Azai bechinat e'ye adayin lo echin et atzmo lemeheve ba'olam. The person haven't even prepared himself to have a part in the world. Before you're doing Tshuva, you don't even, you don't have no shayachut, you don't have no connection to the world at all. Before a person did Tshuva, he's not connected to the world. He lives in a fantasy, he lives in an imaginary world that he made up for himself. He thinks that he needs to work, he thinks that he's going to make money, he thinks he needs to get married, he thinks he needs to buy a house, he thinks he need, he can even think that he needs to do aliyah, he can even think that he needs to, to, to live Jewish life and to be from, and what, he, he lives in a dream. He doesn't listen to the voice of Hashem before he completed his tshuva. The Zohar Kadosh is explaining what's the meaning of the word tshuva. Tshuva means to come back. So where you, when you're, where you are coming back to, to where you've been. So you need to realize that in the end of the tshuva, what you're going to be, you're going to be holy, right? So actually you were holy and you need to come back to your holiness. To do tshuva, it's not only to fix everything that you messed up, all of your mistakes, when you're going to finish your tshuva process, you're going to become holy. You're going to be righteous. You're going to be even higher than righteous. Because it's written, in a place that Baal Tshuva are standing, even the complete righteous people cannot stand. Because of their purity, because of the greatness of their level, because what did they achieve, those Baal Tshuva. So, the tshuva means that you will be pure. But the Zohar Kadosh is saying, that tshuva means that you need to come back to the place that you started. Where were you started? Where have you started? Where do you think? You started in a very holy place and you need to come back to that. Means you need to uncover your true self. You need to start realizing who you really are. And that's the mission. The mission is not to change, is not to become, is not to work on, it's not to develop, it's not to, it's it's just to come back to your real true self and to understand who am I? What's going on with me? Rabbi Nachman is saying in Nikutem Moran that the Jewish person he's got a flaming heart. And now that heart is always flaming, in flames of holy fire. Now the question is, where that fire is aimed to? If now he's flaming to lust and desires, and then you're going to see those Israeli guys going and breaking the world in half. They, they don't, they're not, don't have no fear. I met a person once, he told me, maybe, it's, I don't know, I wanted to say seven, but I'm, I'm getting older, so it's probably 15 or 20 years <laughs> old. I just feel 16, but... Uh, so like something like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, a person that after the army, he, he went for a, a 
trip to the United States. And he came after one year and he told me that he met many people. And some of them were like criminals, gangsters, whatever. And he spoke with them and he met some Italian guy that he's a gangster here in, in, in New York. Was, I don't know if he survived those 15 years. But he told him, we have a problem with the Israelis, mafia, gangsters. So he told him, what's the problem? He said, they don't have no respect. <laughs> <laughs> he said, we, until the, until the Israeli came, we were fighting. We like, but we had honor. We would do things with they He said, those people, they don't care. He said, he can, he can pull a gun and say, like, nothing happened and he will kill you. Like, we don't know how to deal with them. And that's not a praise. <laughs> that's our nature. We are a flame of fire. Now, if you put that person in purity, in Kedusha, great, you will see the pillar of fire in front of the camp. You're going to see angels, and, and you won't understand what the Ban Shem Tov, one day he's in Europe, one day he's in, in Poland, one day he's in Israel, one day he's... What? Well, how do you do that? And, and like... Before airplanes been in, 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 uh, uh, um, invented. invented at all, like what's going on with you? He's jumping from one place to the other in in a couple of hours. Seventy people testified that they saw him, that they sat for a whole week with him in, in those two hours. Like, what's going on? Where are we? I'm Israel walking in the dry land in the middle of the sea. Moshe Rabbeinu putting all of Am Israel. You're talking about three million people. Maybe it was only the men. <coughs> so you're talking about almost one million people in, in two meters square. Like all of them in front of the Holy Ark. What, 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 what? And, and, and no one is, 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 is arguing on that. No one is saying that that testament is wrong. Everyone are confirming that's the truth. Really, it happened. Like you don't have no one that argues. That argue, speaking with Hashem, having superpowers, healing the dead, Elijah, the prophet, comes, he wakes up the dead, and the Yechazkel and Avi, everyone, and what's going on? What's that nation? That's their nature. That's our nature. So now, if you put them in the Torah, in the mitzvot, not in, 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 in front of the books, really, you attach them, you connect them to really, to Hashem, the flame of fire, that huge energy, source of energy that they have inside, will lead them to amazing places. But if they will be in the opposite direction, you will see them crazy. They can take drugs more than any other nation. They can crime. They can do the worst thing. They're not afraid of anything. They will jump, going to climb on the highest mountains. They're going to be crazy. They're the biggest army, strongest army, wild people with no limitations. Because that's how Hashem made them. Hashem made them to be like that. So that's the heart of the Jewish person. So now a Baal Tshuva, he just needs to have some guidance. And that's our job. It's not the job of the righteous people, of the holy people, of the leaders, of the rabbis. We lost our leadership already. You can see that. That's not a secret. You don't have no one that can lead us. You need to lead yourself and you need to lead your friends. And you need to be there for your company, for your family, for your community, for your neighbors, for your... Sh That's the only thing that you can do. We don't have today a person that can say, hey, that's the right way and we're all going to agree and going to follow. We can't find that person. If we'll find him, great, we'll all follow him. I'll be the first one to run after him. First one. But until that day, we don't have no one. And in a place that you don't have a person, you need to be that person. You need to be that man. You need to be that person. No one else can replace you. There are people around you that cannot hear from no one else except of you. And you are still not gifted enough, and you're still not wise enough, and yes, you haven't completed the tshuva yet, yes, and you're not learning enough. All of your lackings, all of your shames, all of your... You, you're right, 100%. You are... 100% not perfect. Great. But it doesn't mean that you are not the one to save the lives of those people. can be a lifeguard that his mind will be very, very filthy and he will still save life in the swimming pool. Why? Because that's his marriage from heaven. 
that in that swimming pool he will be the one that's in charge of saving lives and you can have your thoughts about him who is he and why does he got that married and how he had that merit from heaven to save that poor little girl's life and why why him and not me why him and not that person you can have your thoughts you can have your 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 wisdoms that you think that there are wisdoms but really you don't know anything you don't know who he is and what's written for him in heaven and what's the plan and who she was for him and who is he for her and what's the connection and who was there around them in that situation that had to see that thing and which thoughts it woke up in the people's minds over there and all of those combinations on Yashem Barak got them all included in his thoughts we cannot see the complete picture so also about yourself you need to understand that you cannot see the complete picture so don't try even just be who that you are and do your job and if you feel like being a carpenter go with that and if you feel like being a ballet dancer go with that I'm telling you and I'm accepting on myself all of your punishments and all of your judgments and all of your sorrow I'm taking it now above your heads it's all mine I'll take care of it don't worry it's not on you I, I'm taking it on myself, don't worry. You don't also know over there, I'm taking it on <laughs> you. It's to think that you have judgments on you, it's the biggest stupidity of them all. To think that Hashem is upset on you, that Hashem will be disappointed from you, that's the biggest nonsense of them all. And if someone said it, he is wrong, and he is now suffering from shame in hell. He himself. Because he destroyed and broke our spirits. And you're not allowed to break the holy spirits of Am Israel, of the people that are seeking and yearning and hoping for Hashem. I'm receiving messages, WhatsApps and emails from people. They're crying. She said to me, I'm, I, I'm trapped in a, in a Goyish body and I know that my soul is a Jewish soul. So now what are you going to tell her? She born in a Christian family, she knows she's Christian, everyone are Christian around her. They're Christian, it's not a mistake. She born in a Christian body. And she, in the same message, she's writing, and I know that I must marry a Jewish husband, that my children must learn Torah, and they must learn in Cheder, and I mu they must put in, and I know that I must keep Shabbat and purity of the... F like, what's going on? If it wouldn't be a holy soul inside that really trapped in that jail, there is no other answer for that. There is no other solution. And you don't need to look at that radical example of a convert, of a goy that comes to Judaism. What is the percentage, what's the odds that a person like me will wake up to do tshuva? What's the connection? I was 100% out. 100% secular family, we were not keeping to our mitzvot. Maybe accidentally, we, we, we lived in Eretz Israel, so once in a while you can you know, you eat matzah in Pesach. You also eat bread, but you can also eat matzah. So I ate matzah in Pesach. I'm not going to tell you I didn't eat matzah in Pesach. We're not kofrim against us. No, but we couldn't care less. And suddenly, a person wakes up. Where from? From inside. So many people ask me, who, who woke you up? Who talked to you? Who is the rabbi? There was no one there. It was only my inner thoughts, my inner desire to find the truth and to stop lying to myself. And I, I felt I have a sensor, a sensor inside of me that feels that I'm lying to myself, that I'm going in the wrong path, that something is wrong. Friends are calling you, hey, you want to come out to drink something? You feel, no, I don't want to. And you say, when are you picking me up? So what's going on? And you need to have merit from heaven to feel that. How much lie you can stand? How many nights you can burn in your life doing things against your will? It takes time until you wake up to realize that you're drinking even though that it's destroying you, that you're smoking even though that it's destroying you, that you're eating even though that it's destroying you, that you're, that you're waking up. Whatever you do, hours, days, months, years in your life, you're burning, you're breaking yourself to pieces and, and you hate it. And you don't want that. And you want to live inspiring life. 
life of satisfaction, life of joy, spiritual life, to have spiritual experiences. You want to go to the fields, to the lakes, to the rivers. You want to cry to Hashem. You want to sing. You want to be happy. You want to stop lying to yourself. You want to, 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 to stop dress for others, to, 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 to cut your hair for others, to, to, to buy a, a watch in $5,000 for others. Crazy what people are doing. And they're and they, they, they feel it, by the, but they ignore their feelings. So you need to have that merit from heaven to start realizing, hey, I'm lying to myself. So when it happens, that's the biggest evidence, biggest proof of them all to the fact that that process of tshuva is a real process. It's not another fantasy. It's not another dream. It's not another mistake. Because if it happened to you, and it's also happened to me, and also to him, and also to another 30,000 people that I can call their names right now, so for sure it's a clear movement, it's a clear reality that happens, an inner awakeness that happens from inside. And to that we call Yemei Mashiach, Days of Mashiach, that the souls will wake up from inside, and it's us. And that's why we're not allowed to be ashamed of our thoughts, even though that we haven't learned Torah, and that we're not the students of the Chazonish or the Chafetz Chaim, and we're not, we haven't spent all of our life in, 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 in Shul and in Cheder. My, um, my Girsa de Kuta, the learnings that I was learning when I was a child, was MTV and A-Team, and MacGyver, <laughs> and Arisa Dallas, and Dynasty. That's, the, the, uh, that's what, that was like the, the, the earliest days. That's what we did. That's, those movies, we know them by heart. Those television series, that's, that's how with Beverly Hills, 92-10. That's what even, <laughs> that <laughs> Yes, what, you don't know? Yeah, I do, you said it was funny. That's what. That's how they told us. That's how they taught us in 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 our school, in our Israeli school. People are asking me, "How do you know English? Where you learned your English?" Is only from the television. <laughs> only from the television. I'm not a Native American. I'm not a Jewish American. I'm not. A... <laughs> I was born in Israel. I was not born in the USA. Born in Israel. Born in Israel, with, with, with all of our craziness over there, desiring to, to see Hollywood movies. Mm -hmm. That's where we learned all of our nonsense. And that's it. And Hashem Barach suddenly one day decides to wake you up, to take you out from that head. Your Girsadi and Tukuta, your learnings, is, is something else. You, you, and, and, and still, the Gemara is saying, Gizaru mibnei ha'anim ki mehem Torah. You need to be careful to respect the children of the poor. And when the Gemara is saying poor, means poor from wisdom. Because from them, the Torah will be revealed to the world. So now you need to respect those Baal that are coming from those broken families with no religious education. Why? Because they're humble. Because you can never come to me and tell me that I'm holy, that I'm righteous, that I'm pure, because I know myself and I have my wife to remind. <laughs> we know exactly where we're holding. A Baal Tshuva, if he is not on drugs or I don't know what, a regular, normal, decent Baal Tshuva, he knows exactly where he is. He knows exactly what makes him laugh, what makes him happy, what, he knows exactly what runs in his blood. He knows exactly how thick his blood is, because he sinned. Because he messed up, because he failed so many times. So we know what happens to him when he drives and he hears the trance music. He knows, like, something is pulling him. Like, he, like, you don't have control on that. You know what happens to you when you feel that there is a pub around, that there is a, 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 a club around. You know what's happening. You, you drive my, I, my, I remember, today I'm a little bit cleaner, but maybe six, seven years ago I was, it was still very hard. I remember we were driving with the family in the car and I had bikes when I was young. I was driving a bike. And every time I'm driving with the family, four, three, four children, and we're driving, and, so, and, I, and I hear the, the voice of the motors of the bikes coming from distance and like, 
my wife is asking me, what's going on with you? Where are you? And, and she can never imagine where I am. <laughs> she doesn't know. She can never think. And I'm just like, I have only one thing in my mind. That, Where's my bike? Where the hell is my bike? Why, why give up on my bike? Where's my bike? And that's it. No more bike for you. We're getting you a bike. Motorcycle. You mean motorcycle? Motorcycle. Yeah, motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. Motorcycle. Motorcycle. Where are you from? I'm from New York. Okay. So maybe it's a different. Uh, you can't say a bike. You can say a bike. I just saw in the no, beginning no, where I thought it was like a bicycle. Bicycle. Yeah. 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 We're gonna get you a bike. Thank yeah. you. A kosher. I'll, 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 I'll send it. Show me where she I'll send you my address. As mm-hmm. well. So. You can never understand what goes on in the thoughts of the Baal Tshuva. But the truth is that those thoughts, if you will now be violent to yourself, cruel to yourself, you're going to hate yourself for being who that you are. But if you're just going to open your eyes a little bit to understand that God made you who that you are. If God would want to put me in, in, in the most firm neighborhood to learn Torah from, from the first days of my life, always to be close to Hashem, he could have done that, but Hashem didn't want that. The Creator, He created me to come down to this world in a certain family that will be secular, that we will never going to keep Shabbat together, that we're never going to sing Zmirot Shabbat together, that we will never going to care about if it's kosher or not. That, 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 that Hashem wanted me. Hashem wanted me to 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 try oysters and lobsters and pork and, and, and bacon. Hashem wanted me. So if now Hashem wanted me to taste all of those things, what can I do with that? It happened before I woke up. It's not that yesterday I ate those things. From the day that I started to keep Shabbat, to eat kasher, I didn't touch those things anymore. So I cannot hate myself on the fact that when I was a child, seven years old, if now I'm going to take my seven years old to a non-kosher, trafe restaurant, won't he eat? He will eat. He will eat. What, does he understand? Does he know? He doesn't know. It's food. Actually, it, we couldn't eat. I remember my brother, he wasn't able to eat. He went. We were in Greece. My parents took us to, to an oyster family, the oyster restaurant over there. And like my brother said, I'm not eating that. I'm sorry. It's not food. And he went and he sat outside. <laughs> now he's eating it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> now he's okay. <laughs> but... In those days, he, he couldn't eat it. But us, we didn't care. We ate, we tried, it was funny, it was interesting. We did like, how can I? So why the time I'm gonna hate myself on that? Is there any logical reason for me to hate myself on being a good boy following my parents to, to, to hell? No, I didn't know anything. I didn't know better than that. So why you hate yourself on, on, on your past? So you're not supposed to. Hashem Barach took you down to Egypt and He is now taking you out of Egypt. He took you down to that darkness. It wasn't your fault at all. That was exactly what the Hashem Barach wanted for you. And yes, you're right, it's a huge test. It's a crazy test to go out from that darkness. Really in the end to complete your, your process and to become pure and holy from those depths of, of hell. You're right, it's a huge mission. From that you should learn how huge and powerful you are. How great is your potential? Because you can do something that a firm from birth is not able to do. If you will take a Hasidish boy, 14 years old, and gonna put him where that I was when I was 14, you're never gonna see him again. He will disappear. Take a Bachur Yeshiva, put him in the clubs, in the discos, in the music, in the in the forest parties, in the in the in the no, no. Okay. Is there any way back to 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 the shiva? Is there any way back after taking LSD, after doing ecstasy, after after using cocaine, drugs? Is there any way back? No. He will never be able after he's seeing women dancing, beach parties. There's no way. Put him in Miami for the summer and bring him back to Yeshiva. Okay, no way. He won't go back. Why he won't go back? Because called Ba'alo Yeshuvun. Because everyone that went there cannot come back. Cannot come back. The thoughts, the memories, the smells, the pleasure, the speeds, the, 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 the power, the excitement. He won't go back. And you have the power to resist to all of that energy. 
And actually you feel that you despite it, that you don't want it anymore. And it's a struggle and it's a fight. But understand who is that holy soul that lives inside of you, that is treasured and maybe covered inside of you. But from that understand your power. And you few will work all of your life to uncover the beauty of that warrior, that soldier, that hero, that righteous man that lives inside of you. You will see wonders. You will achieve your true potential. You will become a Jewish person, not a Haredi person. That's nothing. That's nothing. That's a disguise. That's a custom. That's Shtuyot. That's the power of imagination. A beard, a suit, going to the mikveh every day, praying three prayers in the minya. Nonsense. Shtuyot. I'm ready to fight with everyone that will tell me that that is the, the purpose of life. I'm not afraid. Shtuyot. On imagination. That you think that those things will protect you in judgment day. Hashem will ask you, what's your name? You don't know. You won't be able to answer him. You will be so terrified from the shame of not doing tshuva all of your life, of being arrogant, of not respecting the poor people, of not caring on the souls of Israel, of not going and knocking on doors and saving people's life. What did you do with all of my knowledge? You had the Gemara, you had the Zara Kadosh, you had the opportunity to go, to teach, to give that wisdom to others. What did you do with all of the Shefa? You moved your standard. You were all getting old in Beit Midrash. You sat over there in the Beit Midrash and you were learning Torah, zipping your coffee and doing a motzi and ma'amachonim chova and, and, and being arrogant and praising yourself and being so sure that heaven is, is belong to you, that the next station for you is heaven with Yosef HaSadik and with Yaakov Avit. Who are you? You will stand in front of Moshe Rabbeinu and you won't have the power to look at his face. Why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu peeled his skin. Because Moshe Rabbeinu broke his heart, broke his body to pieces. There is no body anymore over there. And you, Shalos Shudas, and another meal, and Kegel, and whatever, all of that shul. And what's that? That's Avodat Hashem? A person came to the righteous man, his name was Rabbi Shmuel Shapira, in, Rabbi, in, in, in Meron, in, in Lag Ba'omer, in the Zion of, of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It was Shabbos before of Lag Ba'omer, and they were serving Kegel over there. In the morning, Shabbos breakfast, the, 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 the Shabbos Kiddush, yes. Kiddush. And, he's ser and they're serving the Kegel, and that person is coming to Rabbi Shmuel Shapira, and he's asking him, how can I taste the taste of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. How can I taste the purity, the taste, the sweetness of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai? Rabbi Shmuel Shapira answered to him, as long as you feel the taste of Kegel, you cannot taste the taste of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. I'm sorry. Finish with that, and we'll talk about that. You can't hold it in two sides. You can't hold the rope in two sides. No, I want to be pure. Okay, so, okay, let's work on your purity. And you know what's our problem? And that's the real answer to all of your problems. That your prayers already have been answered. That's your problem. That you really cried once to Hashem and you said, Hashem, I want to be close to you. And that's it. And that's why you suffer. Because Hashem took you seriously in that moment and He started dragging you from the filth. And you hate it. And you regret on that prayer. And you say, oh, what have I done? <laughs> Such a mistake. And that's the answer. That's really what that happens to you. That your prayer is being answered. And that's it. And now Hashem is cleaning you, sifting you, polishing you. Everything He's doing to bring you to that place that there will be no dividings between you and Him. Now you want to have a wife, and you want to have a house, and you want to have money, and you want to... Those are the patterns from your past that are still screaming from Him. That's not who that you are. If you're going to check who you really are, you couldn't care less about no lust, no desires, nothing in this world belongs to your soul. You don't care. I don't care. Yesterday, my wife embarrassed me, and, 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 and I forgive her. <laughs> we sat, we, we invited a few people, we ate together, lunch, and a person 
sat with us and he told me, but you, you're clean, you don't have lust, you don't have desires. Then he come on, stop with your jokes. He said, no, Rav, you're holy, I know, you're, you, you're not like us. He said, come on, my wife will testify. And I was sure that she will help me on that. What's the problem? Like she, she's happy to, to, to insult me. She doesn't have a problem with that. She's a fine woman. She's a shikhai. <laughs> it's not a problem for her. And then she said, I don't know. So I told her, what do you mean? You know how I eat. You know how I sleep. You know how I do. What, what do you like? Tell him. <laughs> so she said, I, I don't think you have tava tachila. I don't think you have desire for food. You need to eat. So you eat. So I told her, okay, you know how I wake up in the morning, you know I like to sleep, right? She said, no, I don't think you like to sleep, I think you, you need those hours. So like, she destroyed all of my, um, <laughs> I tried to, to do it, so no, really. When you look at yourself and you see that you sleep and you see that you eat and you see that you, you're, you're lazy and you see that you don't have the power, immediately you judge yourself, no. I'm not learning enough, and I'm not davening, and I'm not praying, and look how I'm eating, look how I'm sleeping. But you don't know you. It's written that only two knows the person, Hashem and his wife. It doesn't written that you know yourself. It doesn't written. It's written two knows the person, Hashem and his wife. That's it. Your wife can tell about you. You cannot tell about yourself. When you look at yourself, you don't know. You still don't know. You need the help of your soulmate. Without your soulmate, you're not complete. You cannot see a whole picture. The Zohar Kadosh is calling a person that is still not married, or a person that is married without peace in his house, Palga Gufa, half of a body. You're not complete. You feel, okay, I'm alive, I have energy, I can see, I can think, I can breathe. Okay, but you're not aware to the power that you will receive when you will be complete. Complete is not married. Complete is married with a happy wife. That's complete. Complete it's not after the chupa. It's the beginning of, 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 of feeling how far you are from, from completion. That's the wedding day. In the wedding day you start to feel how far you are from, from the destiny, from what you need to achieve. Was it too much? Yes, it was okay. amazing. <laughs> okay, we can start another part if you want. Second part, volume B. Volume. So, Rabbi Nachman of Westlev is saying to us that the person needs to run away from the honor and always to try to respect others. And if I realized about myself that Hashem was so kind to me and open for me those gates of heaven to understand that I have a huge potential and I'm not allowed to, to give up and I must achieve every goal and never to back off and to be strong. And I remember my early days. So it's, it's one plus one is two. It's very easy. Why it's easy? Because I know where I came from and I see the kindness and generosity, loving kindness of Hashem on me. So it means that he revealed his love for me as an act of kindness, of mercy. Not because I was worthy. I was not worthy. I was eating tra traif. I was driving in Shabbat. I was violating Yom Kippur. I, I couldn't care less about those things. So, But he still woke me up. So it means that he loved me enough to wake me up even though that I was facing the other direction. So when I see that, I realize that that gift is waiting for everyone. It's not belongs to me. If I would be so holy, if I would be so righteous, great. So now I can say, look guys, I'm not sure that you can handle that wisdom. I'm not sure you have the vessels for that. It's, it took me very long time. I was working on myself. Nonsense, Hashem woke me up. I didn't do anything. I was clubbing. I was doing drugs. I was drinking alcohol. I was biking. Motorcycling. <laughs> <laughs> Biking. I was just doing whatever. And still Hashem woke me up. Okay, so now you realize there is a loving kindness. There is a gift from heaven. And that gift from heaven is not only to the righteous ones. It's to everyone that will call Hashem with truth. So you just need to let them know that they have that potential. And what they should do. Talk to Hashem from their hearts, from their mouth, just to say the truth. 
that their mouth and their heart will be one, will be equal, that they will say their feelings, that they will count on their emotions, that they will let themselves be who that they really are, and that's it. And one thing will lead to the other. I don't need to take you all of that journey to your success. I just need to, to tune you a little bit, to, 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 to guide you a little bit. In the moment that you realize that you just need to be honest, that you just need to be truthful, that's it. You're on the train. That's it. It, it will take you to the next steps. That's the only thing. Be who that you are. That's it. And don't, don't try to change. Don't try to become. You cannot change. You're a creation, you're not a creator. You are who that Hashem made you to be. You can never change, you will stay who that you are always. Even in 70 years you will be yourself. And with that past and with that history, you will always going to be yourself. So you need to go and succeed with that. And if you're going to observe and look inside, you're going to find diamonds, pearls, treasures inside of you. Treasured inside of you, that's who that you are. You just need to be aware to those gifts, to those diamonds that Hashem planted inside of us. And I'll tell you one last thing, that there is no past and there is no future. And the only reality and connection to the truth is in the present. And what do I mean? Also when you were in the past, you experience the past in the present. When you were there, you were not really there. You were here. You were in the present while you were in the past. Now, when you're thinking about the future, you will not going to be in the future. You will be in the present in the future, right? So there's no future and there is no past. The truth is that you have only one reality and it's the present. The, it calls in, 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 in Lashon HaKodesh, in the Holy Language, Bahove, in the Hove. In, that's the, the, the time of now. That's when it calls present. present yeah. So that's the name of Hashem. What is the name of Hashem? Havaya mm Baruchu. -hmm. Yudke Vavke means that He's here with you. You want to be with Hashem? You need to be with Hashem now. Not chasing yourself on your past because your past is not reality. Not drowning in the imagination of the future, what will and what won't and how can and positive or negative. It's only an act of, of, of imagination. There is no reality, not in your past and not in your future. They not exist at all. Only one thing is exist and it's the presence of Hashem. Where? Now. In the present with you. So just be and then you're with Him. When you are who that you are, truthful to who that you are right now, you're with Hashem. It's worth it to wait till then, right? Thank you. Chazak Baruch In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.